guys welcome back to my channel so today we're going to be kind of like wrapping up the last video that I made and it was about let me get all in here so it was like a continuance from what I read Proverbs um, pretty much like one through seven um, you guys can look back through it with me if you want to but um, Proverbs 3 1 was my son do not forget my teaching but keep my commands in your heart for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity Proverbs 3 5 through 7 trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight so a little bit of like a backstory from my last video I was like everyone else I think right now like we really don't know how to react to like all the events going on in the world and we're just trying our best to do our part not be anxious um, living our own lives trying to teach our children how to react um, just a just a lot right just a lot um, but I was really confused I was really anxious I had all these questions like I I didn't know like how to play my part in all of this so I just had a couple questions for God and it was is it okay to riot and loot and burn buildings in order to get authorities attentions to ultimately like ultimately make a change in the world um, should I be participating should I make content on my YouTube channel um, whether it be like makeup representing like makeup looks representing um, these big topics or videos like this um, so just addressing the current worldly event to raise awareness how should I go about that because no matter like and I've talked about it to my other friends like we feel no matter what content we make no matter what we say whether it, it is like in person or I don't know on YouTube or Facebook we just felt like it was a very pressure filled environment and no matter what we said we would get some sort of backlash for it and it was very intimidating um so yeah so i i began just praying and god had been like revealing things to me of like what he felt like and then he put somebody in my life and you know who you are i'm so grateful for you <laughs> grateful for you girl Thank you for coming in my life and just sharing God's word with me and pouring literally all of his word and reminding me that I don't need to be anxious. I don't need to fear man. I don't need to fear everything and all the filth going on in the world because I have Jesus. You know what I mean? And it's easy to forget about that when your current situation don't reflect how you how you want them to, how, how you, how God's promises say life is going to be, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, so I just want to point out before I jump into this scripture, guys, this is not my opinion. Yes, a lot of the time I do agree with God, but that's only because I spent time with God and I've I have a lot more of surrendering to do with God, but I've surrendered to him and now I trust him enough to be like, okay, God, if that's what you say is right, I'm going to trust you. And a lot of the times it just goes off of faith and trust because I don't, I don't know what's going on. And I'm not, a lot of the time, guys, we're not going to know until we get up there with him and he's going to be like, this is what happened because of this. This is what happened because of this. But right now it's just about like faith. But I just wanted to point out that this is not my opinion. This is from God's word. This is from the NIV version of the Holy Bible. So yeah. Um, human understanding on the current worldly topic events. Um, I wanted to talk about that first and then compare it to God's word. So human understanding on certain things or events in the world are really based on one, our feelings. And if you're like me guys, that stuff is all over the place all the time. I'm a female for one, you add some birth control into that and everything else, foods, environments, quarantine, like you're just, it's like a, it's, it's really bad. 
um, and they just alter all the time. Like one day I'm feeling sad, one day I'm feeling super excited and energized and happy, and other days I don't even know how I'm feeling. Um, so it can be really like scary to base your understanding, base your what you're gonna do off of your feelings. Um, and then the next thing is whatever is trending. So God refers to us many times in the Bible as sheep. Not trying to be disrespecting, like I said, this is from God's word. Um, if you're a Christian long enough, you know that he refers to us as sheep many times in the Bible and he is our shepherd. One being because how sheep think are, um, they kind of travel in a pack and a flock and they will go wherever the rest of them are going without even questioning it. And sometimes they can go over a cliff. Sometimes they can go to a meadow where there's a lot of food for them, but you never really know because they're just all following along without questioning anything. But God does refer to us as sheep many times. Some examples are John 10:27, Psalm 100 um, verse three, and Isaiah 53, six. I believe that one is where we are all sheep and we have all wandered astray. And sheep do that a lot. They just wander about and then the shepherd, um, there's many stories in here um, where the, she the sheep just wander and the shepherd has to go and get them. Um, and Jesus does that many times with me. I, I wander because I'm human and he just pulls me back. And that's what he did with my friend bringing her into my life and reminding me that I need to be in his word so I won't go crazy. But yeah. And then the last one, um, you can get a lot of like, the way you respond to certain things, you can get those ideals based off of how your parents, I can attest to this in my own, like I respond to certain situations because my mom responds to them, to them like that, or my grandma did, or the people I hang out with do. And really it's whoever you hang out with most, that's who you're, whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, you're gonna reflect their character that's why it's important that we stay in God's word, that we not only stay in his word, but we take time and just pray with him. If you're taking a shower, if you're going for a walk, if you're, I don't know, just any time you need to talk to him like I'm talking to you to make sure you have that relationship with him so you're gonna ultimately reflect his character and be more Christ-like. Um, so yeah, that can alter your understanding and the way you take action on certain topics. Um, a smaller, or not a smaller, but an example of that would be racism. So I'm sure you guys have heard that, um, that meme, that, that quote of you are not born racist, you are taught to see color. And there's just a perfect example that, you know, my best friend, she is black and I've met her in third grade playing Barbie dolls in the library and used to get made fun of, but I did, I've never like seen her color. Like I was taught to see that based off of everything like going on right now, based off of, you know, like media indirectly or just like people telling me, hey, that's not okay. Um, oh, you can't be with that person because they're a, a different color or whatever it may be, like we're taught to think a certain way. So yeah. Um, and now I'm going to go to like the flip side. So that was like how the world thinks, um, as opposed to like what I'm gonna go through now is like God's perception. So I just wanna um, jump into Romans 12 too. And guys, I really, really, really like this verse because um, eventually, through your walk with God, you will, like, adopt one verse, maybe two, maybe more, but one verse usually that really helps you get through certain times in your life, just gives you hope, and, I don't know, it's just like that, that sweet spot with you and God, kind of like he understands you, um, and is showing you that, but mine is Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to attest and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So that just goes to show that we have to make sure that we are not conformed to 
what everybody else is doing, the pattern of the world, but making sure that our minds are being renewed so we can be transformed um, and be more like Christ. And we will know by reading his word like I did. I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Um, how far off I was wandering and, you know, he, I was a sheep and I was going astray. And he's like, hey, I'm the shepherd. Come back. I'm taking care of you. And he helps me um, know what his will is for my life. Um, yeah. And then, so, we're going to go to... Um, we're going to jump right into... This, one, this is where it gets heated, guys, because I... When I was reading this, I didn't really, I didn't really expect God to like open it up to me that much. And it's crazy how relevant this topic is that I'm about to read. Um, so it's called, it's out of Romans 13, straight up starting in verse 1. It goes, submission to governing authorities. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. So the end of it, God's trying to protect us. He's trying to warn us. There's the guardrails. Hey, you're going to get into some trouble if you will go against these authorities that I have put into a place. He always talks about, and I have to look up the Bible verses, but he always talks about like, hey, nothing that happens, I am unaware of. Nothing can slip through my fingers without me putting the check mark of approval on it. And I have put these people into power, whether they be babysitters, whether they be school teachers, principals, um, doctors, presidents, anybody in politics, God okayed it. Even the cashier at Walmart, he okayed it. He allowed them to get those jobs. Do we know the purpose? No. And we might never know. And we, that's where just like trust and come involved. Now, I know guys, like it made me like super anxious made me kind of like fearful even more this morning when I was about to record this I was just like oh no like it's really scary to think that we have to follow along to like all of these authorities and there's some corrupt people out there there's some really good people there's some really godly people but corruption is a big thing in the world and it's crazy to think that if I want to be obedient to Jesus Christ because I have given him my life and I want to follow that's a lot of trust issues, you know what I'm saying, that I gotta follow along with that no matter what they say. But, this is where God's promises come into effect, come into play. And I'll just start naming them off. So you got Deuteronomy 31.6, and these are really like his words of comfort, his promises for us during these times when we're like, oh no, like, what do you mean I gotta follow this corruption? Like, what? But God tells us, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. He tells us we will have trouble no matter what. But take heart, but take heart. I have overcome the world. <clears throat> and then you go into Philippians 4 6 do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus now that's a lot but he he tells us the guardrails and then he says I know it's scary but I still got you I know the world is scary but take heart I have overcame the world and on a real note the text isn't easy to hear but we have to remember to trust the author um, 
and to jump right into some more guys we as humans have strong willpower and emotions like i was saying early like mine are all over the place if i'm being honest um and oftentimes we want to take matters into our own hands especially when that nice little feeling of anger kicks in if whether it be somebody we truly love um being taken advantage of or somebody dying close to us or just like we don't agree with something going on and we just want to stand up and protect them or or any other event that may be going on that may cause anger inside of us and human anger isn't good and God actually um, points that out to us in James 1 um, verse 19 uh, this is titled listening and doing my dear brothers and sisters take note of this everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that god desires therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you so he's telling us that human anger does not is not what God's God wants for us. And then if you jump into um, Romans 12, um, I'm just going to go to verse 9. Love must be sincere. This whole thing is called love in action. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never lacking in affliction faithful in prayer share with the lord's people who are in need practice hospitality bless those who persecute you um, bless and do not curse rejoice with those who rejoice mourn with those who mourn so he knows what's going on in the world right now he can see it he's just waiting on us to come to him and pray and that's up next um, but he knows and he mourns as well and he wants us to mourn together, to come together, to love one another and not spread hatred. Even though we are hurt, even though we are angry, because human anger does not create the righteousness that God wants. He wants us to trust him and he will avenge us. Um, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but willing to associate with people of low position. Um, do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. So don't follow along always with the with the herd, with the sheep. Like you, you want to check in with God and make sure it's okay with what you're doing. If it is, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to revenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, though, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And those last two verses, it just brings back memories of my mom. She was really against, um, like, fighting, anybody picking on us with fighting. And she always told me to kill people with kindness. So that's what that reminds me of. And do not overcome evil. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And if you go down to, I know this is a lot, guys. And it was a lot for me. I was just like, whoa, like God was revealing it one after another and just Bible verses will just like come to my mind. And that's why it's important to say his word too, because when you're faced with certain situations and don't know how to act, the Holy Spirit will pop those up in your head whenever you don't know what to do, um, if that makes sense. Um, if you go down to Romans 13 verse 8, love fulfills the law. Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law, the commandments that you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be 
are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbors as yourself. Love does not harm, does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. So to me, that's just God saying that we need to focus on loving. God loves us and we are to treat others as we want to be treated. And when things go wrong in the world that are unfair, and God, guys, I'm not just speaking out of thin air. I'm not just speaking because this is what I'm reading. This is what God says to do. I have practiced this in my own life, in my own marriage. I was married when I was 18 years old. First one I ever married when I was walking across the stage on my graduation day, the only one. And we've been married eight years now, been together 10. And I'm gonna tell you guys, it's been hard. And the only thing that has saved my marriage on a real note is reading his word and practicing it, having faith that it will work and it has. And a lot of the times, like I don't, I wanna take things into my own hands and get revenge for myself, whether it be just, you know, like marriage isn't perfect, but in other ways too. Um, I've been in a lot of like crappy situations God has brought me out of, but taking revenge has never got me anywhere. Trusting in him, and he has gotten revenge for me. It's pretty crazy. And I just sit there like, wow, like you really did that. Like I didn't even have to do nothing except trust him. And he is our father and he will protect us. It's just really amazing. So I'm not just talking out of thin air, guys. Like there's experience behind this. And sometimes I wish I didn't have that. But at the same time, like it's just like layers to my faith. And those are important because it it gives it something like tangible and people can relate to that so yeah um i think that's like the end of this um yeah this lesson this what god is teaching me right now how i think god is saying that we should respond to these worldly events that really has everybody just what the heck is going on um so yeah, I hope you guys can relate. If you guys have any comments, um, leave them down below, message me. I wanna learn too. I'm not always right. I'm not a professional. I am learning daily and we all need each other. We all need to love each other, learn together and yeah. So yeah, I hope that gives you guys a little bit of encouragement. I learned a lot just last night studying this with my husband and yeah um don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell thing so you can get like more videos whenever i upload them and do you guys have any ideas of stuff that you're kind of like questioning about that you've read or whatever it may be um you can leave those down below and i'll i'll check them out and yeah thank you for allowing me to just have a platform where i can express like things that i'm passionate about about making videos and reading God's word and just sharing with everybody and just sharing my like journey with you guys. It's really cool. Um, so yeah, as always, just keep on loving and spreading joy and peace. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, bye, love you.